The Ben Heck Show is brought to you by Element 14, the electronic design community and online store built for engineers and hobbyists alike. Join now and browse the store at element14.com. Hello and welcome back to The Ben Heck Show. Here on The Ben Heck Show, we're always trying to make cool new things and do it in the most efficient way possible. One way to do this is to acquire new machinery, such as this Epilog laser. You can cut things with a lot of accuracy. But there's other tools we can use too. A couple years ago, I obtained a 3D printer. This is the MakerBot Replicator 2012 model, and it's really good for making volumetric objects. Something else you've seen us do on many occasions is wire up circuit boards by hand. While effective, it's a very slow process. We can also design them in Eagle and then order them in from external board houses, but that can take a couple weeks. So what we're going to do today is figure out ways to make PCBs in-house. Amazing builds, exclusive mods, cutting edge ideas, electronics, engineering, and more. Every week on Element 14's The Ben Heck Show. So, making our own circuit boards, we're going to try three different methods today. We're going to try the iron-on laser printer glossy paper method. Felix is going to draw a circuit by hand using a magic marker. And then we're also going to use my laser cutter to etch paint off of a PCB and use that to make the mask. So let's get started. I took this image from Eagle. I exported basically just the top layer because we're only going to be making single layer boards and I made it black and white and then I printed it, I flipped it horizontally because if we transfer this, it's obviously going to flip. So I got some single-sided copper clad from uh, Element 14 and it's already been roughed up, so we just cleaned it with alcohol and uh, yeah, we're gonna use that as a sample. I cut it into approximately 40 millimeter squares <laughs> and I will try uh, transferring this with the iron. It's kind of confusing. I mean, this looks like the way it should be, but when you transfer it, it'll be mirrored onto your material, so. Yeah. All right. Ah. The glossy stuff sticks pretty quickly once it gets warm at all, so it doesn't shift much. Oh, uh, I probably don't want to burn my duct tape. <laughs> we have this cardboard down because we know the etchant can stain, so we want to keep our beautiful rough plywood table in pristine condition, so that's what the cardboard is for. So in a laser printer, you have a drum which has an electrostatic charge, and the parts the laser hits loses the electrostatic charge, or maybe it's the other way around. Anyway, and that attracts the plastic, and then that plastic is transferred onto your sheet of paper, and then there's a secondary roller, which is your fuser roller, and that actually basically melts the plastic onto the paper. And we're kind of doing the inverse. We're using heat to transfer the plastic ink onto a different surface, in this case, a piece of copper. Okay. Ah, that's hot. Okay, I'm going to stick this in the sink and basically dissolve the paper off. Well, it won't dissolve the paper off, but it'll loosen it enough that I can remove it. So I'm gonna do that. Bombs away! It made a nice sizzling sound as it went in. That's how you know the magic is good. Okay, so <laughs> <laughs> the magic. It's magic. I'm gonna pull this off at a low angle, not like this just in case, so we don't lift off the traces. If we pull it flat like this, they've got a very good chance of staying on. I mean, if you do this properly, they'll stick quite well to the copper, but just to be on the safe side. It's like panning for gold. Yeah, look at that. There's little bits of residue, so I'm just gonna wanna get in with my thumb. Could also try one of these dirty scrub brushes. <laughs> yeah. So it seems like the trick is a good combination between heating up for a long time, maintaining good pressure with your iron, and letting it soak in the water for a good 10 minutes. So patience is a virtue. This is a piece of copper clad that has been spray painted black. I'm going to stick it in the laser and use the laser to burn away the areas that I want to be etched out. And everything that stays black will have copper remaining underneath it after we etch it. Laser is obviously very cool. 
Well, I guess we're using lasers for both, laser printer, laser cutter, so yeah. Let's see how this works. Oh, the laser did a really good job. I didn't think the paint would hold up that well. I mean, I trusted the laser, I didn't trust the paint, but uh, we got a nice clean edge. So what I did was, in the, in the computer, the traces are white and they have black strokes around them and the laser burns away anything that's black. So by just printing the traces with a black stroke, we basically get a free copper fill. I think we have our samples about ready to go. We have a hand-drawn one, an iron-on version, and then we have two that we did with the laser. So this is something I rigged up. It's a tray that uh, has etchant, and I've super glued two video game rumble motors to the edges of it. So they will agitate it. Yeah. Okay. All right, here we go. Boom. Then laser etch. Boom. Hand drawn. Boom. And then another laser etch. Place your batch, folks. Oh, is this motor seized up? Maybe I mucked it up with the hot glue. Oh, oh it's kicking to life. Give us some WD-40. Oh yeah, that's a good idea. Oh, there it goes. It heard the WD-40 and it's like, I better go. <laughs> Although it was fun to hook up those rumble motors. Not just agitating it, but actually like kind of scrubbing it almost with some paper towel or sponge it makes it go a lot faster. And it doesn't destroy our protective layer either, which I thought it would. So that was nice. Now it's time for a tech timeout. Today I thought I'd show you the video mode that I put into my America's Most Haunted Pinball Machine. A pinball machine video mode is where a little game is projected on the DMD and you can play it with the flippers. Let's take a look. This one's called Flippy Ghost. I have to avoid objects and run from the zombies. So let's get started. All right. So the faster I hit the buttons, the higher I fly. Oh no, a bat. Which rhymes with rat and cat. So when the mode starts off, it's pretty easy. There's not much to hit. But then it starts to speed up and then you have to like not hit the moon, for instance. And then you have to get over tombstones. Ah, unless you don't get over tombstones. And the further you go, the more points you get. So there you go, that's our video mode. Engaging with the Ben Heck Show has never been easier with our new redesigned Ben Heck Show page at the Element 14 community. Find video content quicker, see trailers for upcoming shows sooner, and access build resources like schematics, 3D printer files, and designs. You can also join discussions, suggest builds, and interact with myself and other Ben Heck Show fans. I also give away most of my builds, and you can register to win them and other prizes right on the page. Did I mention all of this and access to every Ben Heck Show episode on demand is completely free? Join the Element 14 community today and visit my page at element14.com forward slash TBHS. And now, back to the show. All right, we've done a lot, we've done a lot of experimenting. We've come up with a method that seems to be pretty consistent. So I'm going to hit the rough copper with acetone. And then I'm gonna go right into placing my graphic. Put in the corner there. All right, iron's on. I'm going to apply pressure for about a minute. So this is what I'm doing a little differently. I heated it for a while and I'm gonna hit it with some water to kind of loosen up the paper. This is my soapy water mix. I'm gonna hit it with the iron and make it some nice steam. Your favorite Peter Gabriel song. My thought is kind of to re remove the bond of the toner to the paper sooner than just letting it soak. I'm gonna do this five or six times. It's kind of satisfying, like steam comes out of it and makes you feel like you've done something. It also exfoliates your pores. 
for a clean, fresh feeling. Wait, isn't exfoliate, does that mean when your skin comes off? That actually sounds kind of gross. I've also noticed um, basically moving the iron around doesn't really accomplish anything. If anything, it makes it smear or mess up. But if you apply your photo paper, sticky side down, because it's kind of sticky stuff, you apply that to the copper pretty quickly and get it right the first time, it pretty much won't move after that. So my thought here is I'm continually weakening the paper and obviously the copper is going to maintain most of the heat, so hopefully the toner will move on to that. All right, then a few minutes ago I was testing this and I was, I put a bunch of water on it and I got distracted. It's like text messaging and stuff, but then when I came back, the paper just slid off effortlessly. So I'm going to basically do that again. Okay, I'm gonna go be distracted for a few minutes. We'll see what happens. Man, my friends know a lot of words. Oh well. Let's see how we did. It's not sliding off like before. I better hit it a few more times. It's a jump to conclude. Oh, there it came off. Did, did you catch that? Thankfully, intrepid camera person slash producer slash sweater enthusiast, Allison was there filming and we caught that reveal. Sweater enthusiast, no? So yeah, um, just hitting this over and over and over with several coats of water seems to do a pretty good job. And you can kind of see the process and you feel like you're doing something rather than letting it soak in some water for an indiscriminate amount of time. This way I kind of feel like I have control over it because I'm a control freak. You can go ahead and call me that because it's absolutely true. Uh, I won't be offended. Mmm. Can you smell what the rock is cooking? Hercules. because. God knows we need two Hercules movies in a year. Here's the same circuit. This one was done with the photo paper and the traces are quite nice. And this one was done with the laser. And um, I would say the, oh God, they're awfully close. Uh, well, let's finish them off and then we'll make a final you know, decision on which one's best. So this one, we put in some water to stop the reaction. Now, acetone should eat that paint right off. That's pretty neat that etchant will eat copper, but it won't eat paint. But this acetone will make short work of the paint. And we were actually kind of aggressive with the circuit. We actually have traces going between vias. So, yeah. You can't really see it with the camera, but you can definitely see a raster dot pattern that results from the laser. Even if the laser is trying to make, you know, completely blotting out a square, it still has a resolution, which means on the edges, where it transitions from black to white, it's not going to be a clear line, it's actually going to be the very edge of a dot pattern, just like an old newspaper would have. Newspapers were where they would print the news on paper, and then old people would buy them at the grocery store and then read them. That's what that was. We also have a different type of paint we tried. Let's see if that's any different. Well, it's more resistant to acetone, but nothing can stop acetone. More resistant does not equal resistant. Resistance is futile paint. What we noticed was um, the spray paint method gives a really good edge, but uh, how do I put this? The laser doesn't actually remove all of the paint, even though it looks like it's all gone. It seems like there's very small trace amounts, either that or basically burnt paint residue left on the copper. So um, it takes a little bit more oomph to get that copper to etch. We've made PCBs using several methods and now we're going to look at the results and see what worked out best for us. So the first thing we tried was just drawing the traces using a black magic marker felt tip pen. And it definitely works, of course, you know, it's limited to your artistic skill. And this is a timer circuit that was drawn up. 
And it should work. We got pretty solid traces out of it, but it doesn't look super pretty. This is another one where the traces weren't solid enough and the etchant ate into the copper in a few places. So while that can work, if you have access to a laser printer, the laser printer actually did pretty good results. Um, I always recommend people buy laser printers. They're a really good bang for your buck, super high quality, high speed, and the toner is far cheaper than inkjet stuff. So let me just show you what this looked like. So after you do the transfer, it looks like this. So this is the black toner that's left over after we've transferred it using heat. And then we hit it with etchant. All right, here we go. And we have some pretty nice traces. So these were exported from Eagle, printed on glossy paper, on the sticky glossy side, and then heat transferred onto the PCB. Uh, here's some more examples. This one here was done with the photo method. There are a few bridges here, and I think part of that is we could have been more aggressive with the etchant, but however, that probably would have destroyed those traces. If we would have made the traces a little bit further apart though, it probably would have been just fine. The other method that we tried was laser paint, as I like to call it, because that sounds cool. We took a piece of single-sided copper clad, we made sure it was clean, and then we hit it with like one layer of spray paint. Then we let it dry, set it out in the sun, that's a great way to dry things. And then we used the laser engraver to burn away where we wanted you know, there to be no traces, leaving behind the copper under the paint that were protected in the etchant bath. So let me show you some results we got with that. This kind of shows you kind of half and half. So there's the paint that's left over, and then I removed it with acetone, revealing the circuit. Now again, there's some traces here where it didn't quite all the, it didn't quite get all the copper, and this is before we realized that scrubbing actually helps, but still pretty nice. Uh, this guy, this is really fine detail. And I basically made an image and used a black stroke to create the part that would get lasered away, leaving a copper ground plane. Although, again, we didn't quite have enough etchant in this one. Uh, this guy here has a really good result. And then we also noticed it, we had a couple different types of paint. We had some uh, Rust-Oleum uh, paint and then some Kryolan for plastics. And the Rust-Oleum seemed to give us, that was the white color paint you saw in the video. It gave us slightly better results. I don't know if it was just chance or luck, but uh, yeah, uh, this is really good traces. We have traces going between pads and they all worked out really nicely. And put a surface mount part right here. So this was quite good. Something else we could even possibly do is we could put on a layer of like perhaps a clear uh, enamel onto this after it's been etched. And then we could stick it back in the laser and use the laser to burn away the enamel to create a solder mask layer. I mean, it wouldn't be perfect, but it might be functional. This is the timer circuit again. Uh, this turned out really nice. The edges are nice and clean. The fill is great. The pads are pretty much exactly as they were exported, so some of them have holes in them and some of them don't. But uh, yeah, I was quite impressed with it. Wow, this laser cutter can do anything. I mean, check out this PCB we came up with. And we used the same method in the previous episode to make the button matrix for the Dave Jones CNC. I think our next episode, we'll use it again when we make some high-powered two-way radio chat devices. We'll see you then. Ugh. I still have solvent on my tongue. I guess I like sweaters. Ah! <laughs> that doesn't look very stinky. I think you could do better. If you've never used your iron to iron clothes, you might be an engineer. If you try to put beer in your wine rack, you might be a redneck. Of course, in a hundred years, they'll be like, oh my God, I can't believe they had automated PCB production facilities. How primitive. Two Comet movies, two Ant movies, two Die Hard in the White House movies. Do you believe you can fly though? Don't forget, you can subscribe to this channel, join the Element 14 community, follow us on Twitter, and become our friend on Facebook. The Ben Heck Show is brought to you by Element 14, the electronic design community and online store built for engineers and hobbyists alike. Join now and browse the store at element14.com.